All right, guys, if you saw our last video, we covered a bunch of tools that will help you to get to bolts in hard to reach places. In this video, we're gonna put those tools into application, actual application on this Toyota Highlander here. And we're also gonna show you some new tools as well, specifically for removing an intake manifold. So real quick, the background here, this car came in and has a P0325 knock sensor bank one code. I was able to diagnose that actually the knock sensors work fine, but the wiring for the harness for the knock sensor on bank one, that part of the harness has high resistance and it's causing the code. After the harness up to the computer, everything is good. The computer is good. The knock sensors are good, but we have to replace that wire harness the problem is that wire harness is underneath the lower intake manifold. So it's a job to get this out. And especially on this car, the engineers didn't make it very easy to remove that intake manifold, but the right tools are gonna make this simple. Without the right tools, this is an exercise in frustration. All right, let's get started here. This is my own personal equipment here, but this is a, it's called a lightsaber. It's got two different settings here. Also, it's rechargeable, but honestly, this isn't really one of my favorite things. I'm not gonna recommend this, and I'm probably going to try to hunt for a company that will provide a better one for review, or I may just buy one. It's not particularly bright, and the charge only lasts about an hour or so, even when it was brand new. But it's better than nothing, but uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna try to find something better in the future here. All right, the first thing we have to do, because we're going to remove the lower intake manifold, and the lower intake does have coolant that goes through it, we're just gonna make a huge mess if we don't drain the coolant first. So, we're gonna grab a bucket, and I particularly like these leak tight multi-purpose buckets because of the measurements on the side here. So this way, it's particularly useful with transmission fluid, for example, things like that. So you're measuring exactly how much came out so you know how much to add back in. And this also just lets me measure to make sure I've got enough coolant to replace if I'm going to replace the coolant with new coolant. All right, right off the bat, this radiator stopcock back here you got to get behind this transmission uh, cooler hose here and you just can't get leverage on this to turn it. But you also got the wiring for the fan in the way, so getting pliers in there is really tough. This is a great use for my little 4-inch Knipex pliers here. This allows me to just fit that right in my hand, get my fingertips on there. Oh, this is easy. All right, and there we go. Got it cracked open. Now I can finish it off with my finger here. There we go. All right, got our coolant draining. All right, got to get this decorative cover off here. It's got these little Allen bolts in here. Looks like maybe five or six, whatever size it is, I know I've got it covered right here. All right, this kit by Nyko right here has every size of Allen socket. They also have an equivalent torque set as well. Even have the half sizes here, so I know I've got the exact size. Make sure that I don't strip it out. In several previous videos, I showed you that my battery operated ratchet of choice, this 3 8 AC Delco, but this socket is a quarter inch, so we've got the little brother here. The red one is the quarter inch version of the AC Delco. It uses the same batteries, so I kind of like that, so I don't have 200 chargers all over the place. All right, there goes our cover. Got to get this air box out of the way here. Uh, we got a couple of wire connectors up here now. Remember this car, this is a 2003. This car is 23 years old, just about. So some of these connectors may have never been removed. They're gonna be brittle. They're gonna be very hard. You can't even push the tabs down. That would take the strength of a gorilla to remove those. So we're gonna use this connector removal tool by Lyle. This tool is really genius. Got this grip to go on the bottom side here. 
This part of the tool will lock into the tab. There we go. It took some effort, but way easier than using your fingers here. Some of these connectors are going to be in much harder to reach locations. For that, I've got this sort of 90 degree angle version of the tool. Same principle here. So I want to make sure we don't break those tabs. Beautiful. All right, we got this PCV hose here. It's got the little clamp there. Those clamps can be frustrating, man, because you get your pliers and very often the pliers will slip under the retaining rings there. So there's a trick for that. We're going to use these ring clamp removal tools here. These are perfect. So the one side of the tool has this little hook right here. The other side of this tool has the cup. The hook goes over that part of the clamp, the cup will grab onto the little tab right there. And now that's not slipping off. That is going to be easy to remove just like that. For harder to reach locations, there's also this handy 45 degree angle version as well. All right, so this hose is gonna really be frozen on there. We also wanna make sure we don't damage it. Everything on this car is gonna be brittle. So these hose removal pliers, this comes as a set of three, is perfect for this application fit right on there and you can break that hose free and we can pull that hose off. All right, to make reinstallation of my hoses and connectors easier, I'm gonna use this Universal Auto Care silicone paste right here. The silicone paste is also really good for your water hoses. It won't deteriorate the rubber like regular grease will and that'll make slipping those hoses back on much easier. We can also put it on the exterior of the hose and make it easier to fit that ring clamp back over. Can also put it on our connector fittings here to make those connectors easier to slip on and easier to remove for next time. Okay, there goes our air box. All right, we've got this ABS relay right here. We need to move out of the way because we're going to be removing this entire plenum here, this upper intake. But we've got this sway bar, uh, strut stabilizer bar in the way here. So we're gonna remove that. All right, now we come to one of our first frustrations that right off the bat, if you're not prepared for this, this is going to be pretty frustrating. We've got this bracket right here. This is a support bracket for the upper intake. And if we look, it's kind of U-shaped. And I don't know why in the world they would do this. But between these edges here on this bracket, there is a bolt that is running through there to support the plenum. And because of the shape of this, you can't get a flat wrench in there because the bolt is recessed into this bracket. I don't know why they would do that, but the other thing is that it is down here at my fingers. There is like enough space between that bolt and the firewall for my index finger to fit. So you're not gonna be able to get a ratchet in there. This is where those offset wrenches come in so we can get that right there. You just have to do this blind and we can break that bolt loose. Just got enough room to walk that bolt off with our fingers here. Okay, there we go. It's almost like delivering a baby there. All right, we're gonna have a lot of bolts here that we're gonna be removing. One trick to knowing where the bolts go back, you can screw them back into their locations. Sometimes you can't really do that. So I've got this organizer here and I just put the bolts in order as I go. Okay, this upper radiator hose is gonna be in my way here. That is another job for my ring clamp pliers, but we also don't wanna have coolant spilling everywhere because that was full of coolant just a second ago. So we're gonna use these hose clamp pliers there. So when I remove the hose, we don't lose a bunch of coolant all over the engine and make a mess of the car. And once again, these hose clamp pliers make very easy work of these ring clamps. 
Okay, that hose is absolutely stuck on there. A couple of things we could do. One of them is we could use a tool from Radiator Pick Set like this and get in there and poke through there and break the seal. But we also risk poking through the hose. So I really use these sparingly or if I'm replacing the hoses. Otherwise, I'm going to use this hose removal plier here. Set that a little bit larger. Got these teeth to kind of grip on there. Okay, there we go. Break that free. There we go. And we can set that aside and we're not gonna fling coolant everywhere because we've got it clamped. All right, we've got this ground nut right there and it's kind of inconveniently located behind this line right here. So we've got all these obstructions here. This is behind this tube so I can't really get a ratchet in there. This is a great application for the S wrench. Snake, really get out with snakes right around and in between the obstructions. There we go. All right, get this bolt right here that's kind of annoying me. So, to make really easy work of this, just be able to zip this off. My little double flex stubby. Should be able to get in there. Oh yeah, that's way easier. That thing where you can just get your fingers on the bolt, but you can't get the leverage to loosen it. Now it should be loose enough. And there we go. The first time I ever did one of these, I probably spent an hour just on these tough to reach bolts. All right, there goes our ground wires. All right, the rest of this is just basic bolt spinning with pretty much the same tools, removing the hoses and everything. So we're not gonna go through that. This isn't a tutorial on how to remove the intake manifold. It's just to show you some tools to make very quick work. We haven't even been 10 minutes into this and we've pretty much got the difficult stuff done. So I'm gonna come back when we have a new application that pops up where we're gonna need another special tool. All right, got a bunch of our EVAP and our front bank fuel injector connectors here. That's just gonna constantly be in the way. So we're going to bundle all this up, and wrap one of my reusable wire tie things here. And there we go. All right, they sure love to do this, don't they? But this hose clamp, they positioned right underneath the throttle body there. So my favorite little gizmo tool, well, I can't get it in there, it won't fit. So, give you a little tip here. We're gonna attack it with these 45 degree angle pliers, but what I do on all my pliers like this is I take my angle grinder and I grind in grooves into the jaws like that. And that way I can get those grooves onto those tabs so that my pliers won't slip off like that. All right, with the right tools, even with filming, which greatly adds to the time on this, less than an hour to get to this lower intake here. Now, before we remove this lower intake, we don't want any junk falling into the engine. So you know what that means if you've seen it before, my new favorite tool, the U-Well Tools, super powerful blower. All right, make sure nothing falls into the engine. And now, there we go. We can just set this aside. Okay, and we can actually see the knock sensor harness here and the knock sensors. It's underneath this water pipe. So we're gonna remove that water pipe, but we don't want anything falling into the engine. Cover these holes with these blue shop towels, which by the way, I use these shop towels all the time. 
These are Scott shop towel heavy duty version. So these actually have a little of a quilted pattern. These are much stronger than the ones you may be familiar with, which is the regular blue Scott shop towels. These are much stronger, much heavier duty, thicker, no lint left behind, very durable. And you want to look for the one with the kind of quilted pattern there, and you know you got the heavy duty one. I use these all the time. All right, we're going to use these back probes here that I use constantly. All right, so we're going to go to our first knock sensor wiring here. I'm going to measure our resistance on our Astro AI digital multimeter DM600AR. This is my pretty much go-to multimeter. And even if you have no skill with multimeters, no need to worry. This one's auto-ranging, so it's automatically going to set. Okay, it's going to be one of these two wires. Looks like we got that one there. Wow. Okay, and we've got almost an ohm of resistance there, 0.9 ohms of resistance. That is a lot. I measured 0.1 ohms of resistance from this connector to the computer. So we're going to measure the other side here. Oh, wow. And, and there's, there's our issue. So we've got 2.2 ohms on this one. Now, the other wire is also bad, but it wasn't bad enough to throw the code. But 2.2 ohms, that's ridiculous. So we have confirmed our issue. We know that this is going to fix the car. I already know the knock sensors are good. Everything else is good. We need a new harness. Now, if you happen to have this particular vehicle, this is a 2003 Toyota Highlander, but I believe that there's a lot of these Highlanders that use the same exact setup. There's a really easy kit you can get, and that's this kit right here. And what this kit has, check it out, is two new knock sensors. We don't need those, but we'll probably put them in anyway just because customer paid for the kit. And look at this, a new harness as well. All right, so I dropped a nut down here and it's kind of nestled in there a little bit in a hard to reach spot. Of course, I could use my magnet tool and just get a magnet and pop that out, but I want to do something much more cool than that. All right, check it out. Wait for it. Ah, there we go. This is also magnetic, but if the thing you're picking up is pretty heavy, you can just push the plunger down and add some jaws to it. Pretty cool. Okay, so we know that we accurately diagnosed the problem. How did I know that, by the way, before I even removed the intake manifold? Hmm, you'll have to watch that video to find out. But we're done with this because putting everything back together is just the reversal of the removal and we use the same tools pretty much. So we're gonna go ahead and conclude this video and we've got links to every single one of the tools that was shown and demonstrated here at the video description right under the title of this video. And also make sure if you wanna learn how to do the diagnostics that I knew exactly there was gonna be high resistance on one of those wires. That's my main channel, Schrodinger's Box Auto Diagnostics. You'll have a good time there. Thanks for watching.